know where to tap to increase your property's net operating income. Message brought to you by me, Cordell Davenport. Go to my website, smallapartmentinvestors.com to find out more about who I am, what I'm all about, smallapartmentinvestors.com. And before I start off, I want to relate to you a story. A giant ship engine failed. The ship's owners tried one expert after another, but none of them could figure out how to fix the engine. Then they brought in an old man who had been fixing ships since he was a young boy. He carried with him a large bag of tools. And when he arrived, he immediately went to work. He inspected the engine very carefully, top to bottom. Two of the ship's owners were there watching this man, hoping he would know what to do. After looking things over, the old man reached into his bag pulled out a small hammer and he gently tapped something. Instantly, the engine lurched into life. He carefully put his hammer away. The engine was fixed. A week later, the owners received a bill from the mechanic for $10,000. What? The owners explained. He hardly did anything. So the old man said, okay, well, send me an itemized bill and I'll prove to you that it cost $10,000 to fix this issue that you had. So old man replied, tapping with a hammer, $2, knowing where to tap, $9,998. Moral of the story, effort is important, but knowing where to make an effort makes all the difference. Same thing applies with knowing where to tap to increase the net operating income of apartments. And that's the main crux. That's the nucleus of everything is net operating income. Commercial real estate is all about formulas and so many different tangents branch off of net operating income. It's very essential to know how to increase it. And in this presentation, I'm gonna show you how, how you can do that. Now, first, let's talk about net operating income a little bit more, more NOI. Now, it is the income after being reduced by credit loss, vacancy, and operating expenses. And gross operating income, with that, you take the gross scheduled income, which is the property's annual income, if all units were rented out and all of the rent actually was collected. They're gonna subtract from this amount an allowance for vacancy and credit loss. The result, gross operating income. Now, the operating expenses are not so clear. And to be considered a real estate operating expense, an item must be necessary to maintain a piece of the property and to assure its ability to continue to produce income. Loan payments, capital expenditures, depreciation are not considered operating expenses. For example, utilities, supplies, landscaping, property management, are all operating expenses. Repairs and maintenance are operating expenses, but improvements and additions are not. These are capital expenditures. Property tax is an operating expense, but your personal income tax liability generated by the property is not. Your mortgage interest may be a deductible expense, but it is not a part of operating expense. You may need a mortgage to afford the property, but not to operate it. Focus on what you can control. You can't control if a tenant pays late, 
but you control giving them late fees. You can't control neighborhood crime, but you can't control your premises by having gates, bright lights, cameras, etc. You can't control something that is broken in the unit and the tenant needs maintenance to fix it, but you can control how quick and efficiently you handle the request. You can't control how a tenant cleans the inside of the unit, but you can't control how clean the unit is when a tenant moves out and how clean the parking lot is, curb appeal. You can't do all the tasks, but you can create leverage when you delegate and use technology. Okay, seven reasons why residents move. And as you read why they move, it's obvious. Do the opposite to make them stay. If possible, you want your tenant staying forever, paying rent, market rent, that is, too. So here we go. A lot of them move because they don't see added value after their tenant, I mean, after their rent is increased. Their loyalty is not rewarded. They view extra fees as bogus and unwarranted. A lack of lease renewal information from landlord or property manager. Unfulfilled maintenance requests. Unclean and poorly maintained buildings or property. All right. That's why they move. Now, let's talk about resident retention system. Systems are very wise to have in all aspects. And owning apartments is a business. So create something similar as what I'm about to show you here. Schedule a 72 hour call after they move in. Call and send thank you for it when people do a renewal. Schedule a 45 day contact by phone or letter after the lease began. Schedule four month contact by phone or letter, which is 60 days since the last scheduled contact. Schedule seven month contact by phone, 90 days after last contact schedule. So you have to create a system, have a calendar that has reminders. You can have like a CRM system, do your research on that. In conclusion, we talked about what is NOI, why residents move, and how you should do the opposite, and how to have retention resident system, resident retention system. Check out the website, smallapartmentinvestors.com. I have many more topics on buying, selling, managing small apartments. And knowledge is about facts, it's about ideas that we acquire through research, study, investigation, observation, or experience. Wisdom is ability to discern and judge which aspects of that knowledge are true, right, lasting, and applicable to our life. When that knowledge is learned and it is applied appropriately, it then becomes wisdom. Now, you are no longer clueless on how to increase your NOI. I've guided you on knowing where to tap, just like the ship mechanic I mentioned in the introduction. Implement what you learned today. Know where to tap. Increase your NOI. Do that. And guess what? When you do so, you will thank me later. So check out the website. Once again, thank you for listening. And I hope the best for you.